Welcome to my video update on the development progress for the Steam VR simulation of the 1851 Great Exhibition. In this video we return to where we ended video number 24, at Christoph Fratten's Setter Dog. We have now added Fratten's Greyhound. Both of these pieces are now at the Colbrookdale Museum of Iron. Passing between the two dogs, under the stairs, and back into the nave, we turn east, past the Ross Telescope, to the Colbrookdale Dome. This imposing ornamental iron structure was designed to allow glazing as a summer house, but was not glazed at the exhibition. Still to be added within the dome are a grand piano and John Bell's Eagle Slayer statue. To the southeast of the Colbrookdale Dome is the first of a number of display stands added for this update. First, a number of exhibitors from Sheffield. Here is the stand of Robertson Car and Steel, manufacturers of steel grates and cast iron mantelpieces. Immediately west is the stand of the Green Lane Works of Hool & Company, manufacturers of stove grates and fenders. The spectacular entrance gateway of the Green Lane Works survives, although the coat of arms which used to adorn the face under the apex roof is lost. Just to the west of this is the rather grand entrance to the stand of Stuart & Smith of Roscoe Place, another manufacturer of stove grates. This theme of stove grates is hardly surprising. Coal fires were probably the de facto method of heating a home in 1851. Having said that Mr. Leslie clearly saw gas as the fuel of the future. Passing through the Stuart and Smith archway and turning west, we see this magnificent Axminster carpet by Jackson and Graham of London. Moving back into the nave, we are now in the Woolen and Worsted section, where we have display cabinets from Leeds and Bradford. The Bradford cabinet being allocated to Titus Salt. He is credited with creating alpaca cloth, made from alpaca wool. So successful was his business that by 1851 it was the largest employer in Bradford. His expanding business resulted in the building of what is now known as Salt's Mill in Saltaire near Bradford, which offered improved working conditions over those normally experienced by mill workers. The building is now adapted to house art, shopping and dining space. Watch out for my next video, which will continue to add to the contents of the exhibition.